Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu Wassalam ala Rasulillah. Today, inshallah, we are going to finish section P8 and chapter P and starting also uh, chapter one. Let's remember uh, quickly uh, what was the objective, uh, the main objective of this section. In, in fact, it is solving basic equations. The most basic equations are the linear equations and the power equations. To solve linear equations, what you need to do, you need just to convert it to this form. Let me uh, activate the slide show. So just if you have any linear equation, convert this equation to this standard form. And after that, you will just be able to move B to the right hand side and then divide by what? By A. For, for power equations, to solve power equations, you need to write it as in this standard form. Something, something to the power N. N here, it could be positive, negative integer. It could be rational number. Uh, here, if you have something like this, what you will do, you will just raise both sides to the reciprocal of N, to one over N, which is in fact identical to the Nth uh, radical. If N is even, uh, if N is odd, then this expression will be equal to the nth root of a. If it is even and the radicand is non-negative, you have positive or negative, the nth root of a. If, of course, the radicand, what is inside the radical, if it is negative, then there is no real solution. This is if n is even. And these are the properties of equality that we used. You can add, subtract, multiply both sides by non-zero numbers. Uh, also, we learned uh, how to solve for one variable. If you remember the last examples that we had, these examples, they were about how to solve for one variable. Today, the last objective is this, how to make a linear model, how to uh, translate uh, from English to mathematics, how to solve the world problems mathematically, how to give them a model, a mathematical model. To be able to do that, I have here a table for you that will help you to uh, write the word problems in a, uh, in a mathematical way. So when you have in any problem, when you have these words increased by total sum together with added to more plus and this means addition. When you have decreased by, take away, difference, minus, power, less, subtract from, this, this is subtraction. When you have pair multiplied by, percent of, by, product, time of, this is multiplication. So you have something multiplied by something, or you can use dot, whatever. Division, when you have uh, is to ratio of, quotient of, divided by, over, into, Equal, if you have is, it means equal, equal, same as makes, leave, yield, equivalent, result in. Also, when you have twice, it means multiply by two, times two. Doubled times two, tripled times three. Let's take an example, and this is a solved exercise. What you need to do if you have a word problem? The step number one is what? Read, read the problem. And this is what we call the first reading. So let's read it together, Shabab, the first reading. And when you do the first reading, at least you should know what is given and what is required. What do you have? What do you want? Okay, then you can do a second reading and the third reading until you, you fully understood the problem. If you, if you cannot understand, if you didn't understand the, the problem, how can you solve it? So let's read it now. Let's do the first reading. Give it, read all the problem. You may take one minute to read it. If the length of each side of square, so you have square, there is a square in the problem. This is what the first thing that I will understand from this problem. If the length of each side of square is increased by three. So I was having square with, with, uh, a specific length. Now it has been increased by three. The parameter of the square, of the new square, what is the parameter of square? Uh, you need to ask yourself this question. This is the first reading. It is, it's okay if you, if you understand some things and you didn't understand everything, it's okay. 
is 40 centimeters more than twice the length of each side of the original square. Find the dimensions of the original square. So at least you understand from this that there is square and you need to find the length of the original square, okay? So now you will go and do that second reading. In the second reading, what you need to do? Sentence by sentence, word by word. If the length of each side of a square, so let's give this a name. We need to give this a name. This is tip, it is called assign a variable. Give it a name. The length of each side of square, call it what? X, Y, Z, whatever. It is like your son. Give him the name that you like, okay? So let's call this X for simplicity. So now X is the length of the side of the original square. Now he says that this length has been increased by three centimeters. So this means that it was X, now it becomes what? X plus three. X plus three. So let's draw these two squares. So this is the original one, the original square. You know what is about the square? That each side, they have the same length, the four sides have the same length. Now this will be X plus three, X plus three, X plus three. So until here we are done, Ishabar. We stopped here. This is the first sentence. Now let's go to the second sentence, which is the main sentence in the problem. The perimeter, what is the perimeter of any geometrical shape? Whatever your geometrical shape is, what is the perimeter? Uh, it, is, it is the length of the boundaries of this shape. Okay, so here the perimeter is this, plus this, plus this, plus this. The another name for the perimeter is circumference. The circumference or the perimeter, they mean the same meaning. Okay, so if the perimeter of the new square, this is the new square, so the perimeter is this, plus this, plus this, plus this, what is it? What will be the perimeter of this? If we call, if we call it P, P new, this is for the new, it is what? Let's find the first the, for the old. What is the B old or the original? It is four X, X plus X plus X plus X. It is four times X. For this one, it will be what? Four times what? Four times the length of the side, which is X plus three. Good. So what he said, he said that the perimeter of the new square, this is the perimeter of the new square, is, is means what? Equal. Is what? 40. 40, let's me, let me write it this way. 40, is it like that and we will stop? No, he said 40 centimeter more than, more than it means what? Addition. We have addition, okay? Now more than twice, twice it means multiply by two. Twice what? The length of each side. What is the length of each side of the original square? X. So this is the main sentence. We, 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 we now translate this from English to mathematics. We have each side, this, the right hand side and the left hand side, each side, this one, this one, this one, this one. You know that they are the same for the square. Each side. What is the length of each side? X. Whatever the side that you will select, it, its length is X. He didn't say the perimeter of the, the old one. Now, Shabab, keep in mind that we are in section P8. In P8, it is about what? About linear equations in one variable. Is this a linear equation in one variable? So first of all, if it is not, you, you did a mistake, okay? Now, I prefer, I advise you to write it. Let me show you uh, the same, how to translate this, of course, Shabab, look. This is the same as we did. How to translate from uh, from uh, English to math? The new parameter had the new parameter. Is this is is forty? This is forty. More than this is plus. Twice this is twice. The length of each side of the original square. This this x. I advise you to write it this way: two x plus forty. It is the same, but. What you understand that it is the same as the double, but it is more than that by what? By four. You need to add 40 for this one to be equals to the new one. Because if this is less than, what you will do? Is this going to be minus? 
what he said, if he said that this is less than this, this will be bigger. The bigger one will be this. If he said, let me, I think we have a problem later. If this is less than, think about it. If this is less than, not more than, what, what will be the model? Of course, it is impossible for this question because here, uh, let me give you this later with another exercise. But for this one, it cannot be less than because this is the bigger one. It increased. So it is natural here to be more than the original one. Anyway, so now you have this model. Now, what you need to do after you have the model, you have the equation now. What you will do, you will just solve it because what you want, you want the dimensions, find the dimensions of the original square. What are the dimensions? The four sides, these are the dimensions. You need to find what is X. So if you know what is X plus, you know what is the, each side is. So you will solve the equation by just expand. So it will be here. You have here four X plus 12 equals to 40 plus 20 uh, plus two X. And here we are, it is a linear equation. Solve it, add negative two X for both sides and subtract 12 from both sides to X equals to 18, uh, 28 X is 40. It makes sense. You can check, you can verify that your, your solution is right or not. Is it now logical? If you bought instead of X 14, it will be, it make, make sense or not. Now, if you, if you understood the, the, the previous exa example, you can solve this recitation exercise. Please, in your notes, give me the, the equation. What would be the equation, the modeling uh, of this uh, word problem? How to solve it, how to model it mathematically, how to write it mathematically, and how to solve it after that. So just give me what is the equation and also uh, how to solve it, what will be? Read it, try to under, uh, understand it, assign a variable, write the equation, solve the equation. During that, I'll take the attendance quickly and let me pause the recording. Recording. So who has the model, Shabbat? Can you, do you have the equation? Give me the equation, not the, the number. No, you have a mistake. You did a mistake. There is a mistake in the modeling, of course. Check that. Uh, uh, check the number that you obtained. Is it makes sense? Now read the problem with with the new inform information that you have. The parameter of the new square is this the parameter of the new square? No, it's the original. No, no, you have a mistake. It is not true. There is small mistake there. Where is the model? Yes, you are right. Yes, this is true. You see the model, the equation. A half of what? Read, read it again. It is a half of what? A half of what? Like this. True, true, but you need to write here a half of four x in the original model. Yes, it's okay. It is right. So if you solve it now, find the number. You can check now. Is that did you obtain the number? This is the number that you are looking for. Thirteen. Uh, the I mean the the x. Dimension, I told you what is the dimension. The, the, the square has one dimension only. It has four, but they are the, have the same length, the sides of the, the square. Now we actually have a, what, we, what is this? If the length of each side of the original square, so we have original square. Let's call the length of this original square is what? The same way. Now what happens, it is decreased by four so it was it was 10 it becomes six for example so this this means that we have our new square our new new square will be x minus four these are the sides of the new square did you did that this is the first step now the parameter of the new square what is the parameter of the new square four multiplied by x minus four this is the parameter of the new square is uh, 10 more than, so it is 10 plus, more than the half of the parameter of the original square. This is the difference between this question and the previous one. Here he's, before it, he said about, the, it is twice the, the, the length of the side. Here he said the parameter of the original square. What is the parameter of the original square? For x. This is the model. Is it linear equation with one variable? You're right. So now it is just about 
simplifying this. And this will be what? 2x equals to 16. Uh, 26, 10 plus 16, which is 26. X equals to 26 over 2. Okay, then, then by inches. Then by inches. Inches, of course, the unit is inch. Okay, now, of course, you can go back and Shabab and check. Is your, is this make sense? Yeah, if this is 13, this will be what? Nine. Nine. So check that. Really, really that the, the parameter of the new square is 10 more than the parameter of the, what will be the parameter of this? What will be the parameter of this? And check that. Check that your problem now, it, it makes sense that it is correct. I believe that you can also solve this, this recitation exercise, Yashab. Please, give me the mathematical model of this. The difference, read it, the difference between two, between five times the number and eight is equal to seven times the sum of the number and three, find the number. As a hint, you should write what at the beginning? What is the number? Give it a name. So let's say X is the number that you are looking for. So this is the number. Mm -hmm. Let's see. No, I don't think so. Are you a mathematician or a magician? magician. Mathematician didn't do that. Mathematician, they try to find it step by step. Mm -hmm. Right, this is the model. Continue now. Now you can find the number. Yes, I, I, will, I will see. Let me see the model. I'm interested in the model. You have a mistake here. Read the problem. Yes, who has the model? I need the equation, Shabab. The equation, right, this is the equation. Plus, you can solve it. If you have the equation, you can solve it. I know, Shabbat, that some of you, they can uh, solve it mentally. You're right. Right. The model? Right. Yes. Excellent, Shabbat. No. You have a mistake here. This is true, but this is not. Right. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent, guys. Now, uh, let's solve it together. For those who, who didn't solve it. So we, we, we called, uh, we assigned the variable X to be the number. Now, he said the difference. So we have what here? Subtraction. The difference between what and what? Between five, five. times a number. So this is five times a number and eight. So the, my question here, why it is not eight minus five X? Following the order of the question. What is given first? Should be first, okay? You're right. If he said the difference between eight and five times the number, it is eight minus. So it is, of course, mentioned from the left to the right. So it is five X minus eight. I have noticed that some of you, they write plus. I don't know why. So it is the difference between five times a number and eight is equals to seven times, seven times, times what? The sum of the number and the three. This is the sum of the number and the three. I have noticed that some of you, they write it like that. Seven X plus three. They wrote it like that. This is not true. Here you are multiplying seven. This is the sum of seven times the number and the three. Not seven times the sum. So be careful. Now, after that, it is a linear equation with one variable. So you can now solve it easily. 7x plus 21, and this make what? Bring five to here, it will be 7x minus 2x. This will be negative eight minus 21. This is, uh, this is five, why, why I wrote it two? I'm thinking about the result, okay? This is 2x and this will be negative 29. X is negative 29 over two. Check, yes. Now you have here, a Shabab, uh, similar uh, problems with, 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 with detailed solution. I will leave it for you to practice. We did solve these two exercises in the previous uh, class, uh, if you remember. Uh, just we solved this one. I think I give you the idea how to solve this. Just multiply both sides by the LCD, which is BK. Now, 
this kind of questions is important, as I told you. I think with you, uh, we did solve it in the previous class or not. Yeah. No, we didn't. Yeah. So how to solve such a problem? He gave you here the solution. He didn't want the solution. He gave you the solution. He said, if, if 5 over 12 is the solution of this equation, then what is A? So you need here to solve it for what? X is given. So just substitute by X and solve it for A. But, but before that, you need to do something. What is it? Multiply both sides by, which is what? 20. Multiply both sides by 20, and it will be so easy after that. By the way, I will not solve it for you because I, I, I already did solve some, some uh, old exam questions for you with the same idea. Here it is. If a half is the solution of this equation, what is k? Solve it for k. So both x equals to a half and multiply at the same time by what? By the LCD, which is what? 12. Multiply both sides by 12. Look how it will be after that. So easy. Another one also with the same idea, if x equals 21 over 11 is the solution of this equation, what is in capital? I solve it for you by uh, using two methods. Now let's go to these three problems. Uh, what do you think, Shabab? Which one uh, you think uh, we should solve? And the, fir the first one is so easy. Just you need to multiply both sides by what? By the LCD, which is six. So just multiply both sides by six and continue. Now, what about the second one? To solve the second one, let's solve, let's solve B here. What we will do? We will um, factor first, no. You need first to factor each denominator. So this will be equals to what? One over two or X as a common factor. X multiplied by two X plus one, is that right? Now multiply both sides by what? By the LCD. This is the LCD. X multiplied by 2x plus 1. Multiply both sides by the LCD, which is x multiplied by 2x plus 1. Now this will give us what? 2x plus 1 minus 2x equals to 1. Is that right? Now 2x minus x. Zero. Zero plus one is one. One equals to one. What is that? What is the variable? We are looking for x. In fact, here, this means that this is always, always what? Always true for any x. Uh-huh. For any x, is that right? For any x, not zero and not negative a half. Why x cannot be zero, Shabab? It is in the denominator, look. X cannot be negative a half. And here, when you multiply here, this is why I told you in the previous class, when you multiply by a quantity, make sure that it is not what? It is not zero. So you should write this condition here. When you, when you multiply both sides, you should write that you are multiplying, uh, you are not multiplying by a zero. Always, when you multiply by a variable, check that this variable is not zero. Otherwise, you, you will lose your, your, your um, variable. Here we are. So the solution is all the real numbers except zero and negative half. Yes. So, so why do you want to write this here? The LCD, to, we need to re get rid of the fractions. We need to remove the fractions. You, if you don't want to do that, don't do it, no problem. Just make them a single fraction here, a single fraction there, and the numerator will be equal to the numerator. Yes? Why do you put the inside? Because here, 2x plus 1 will be 0 what? This one will be 0 if, if x is what? 2x plus 1 will be 0. The denominator will be 0 if, if x is what? This is linear equation. You can solve it. Okay, Shabab. For, for the last one, the same idea. But what will happen there? Let me do it for you quickly. So this is C. So in, in part C, it will be 1 over x plus 4 plus 1 over x equals to 2x plus 3 over what? x as a common factor, x plus 4. Now we will multiply by the LCD. What will be the LCD in this case? 
We will multiply both sides by the LCD, which is X times X plus four. Multiply here by X times X plus four. Now, what we will get? We will get X plus X plus four equals two, two X plus three, right? Now, X plus X will be two X plus four equals two, two X plus three. If we add negative or subtract two X from both sides, what we will get? Four equals to what? Is this true? Impossible. This is false. So what is that? We say false. So this is impossible. So this side, this side, this side, impossible to be equal to that side. So this equation has no what? No, no solution. If if he asks about the, the solution set, what is the solution solution set? The empty set. Nothing. Phi. Okay, let's see these three equations, Yashala. They are with the same idea, by the way. If you can solve any one of them, you can solve the, 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 the third one. Uh, let me start with the first one, A. How to solve A? Yes, please. Always, always. This is called what? This is called isolating, Yashala. We will try to isolate the expression with the power alone on one side. We need it at the end to be x to the power n equals to a. So this is our target. Next step will be what? Dividing by what? By six. What is 216 over six? 200 uh, over six. Uh, let's do it long division. So it is three times six, 18, 336, six, 36, zero. So what is it? 36. Okay, let me write it because of some of you, they may wondering from where it comes. So in fact, we divide by six. Now, what we will do in this step? We will, we will raise both sides to the reciprocal. We have here two over three, so it will be what? This is equivalent. This is equivalent to cubing both sides, then take the square root. So you need to do what? Cube both sides, then take the square root. This is equivalent to raising both sides to the power three over which is the reciprocal of the power that we have. Now, what we have here? That's Cancellation. What is, let me start with the right hand side. What is 36 to the power half? 36 to the power half is six. Six to the power three? Again, 216. Now, here we will have X or the absolute value of X? Sure? Because we have square root here. Yes. Right. So this means that X is positive or negative. 260. Remember that the nth root of x to the power n is the absolute value of n if n is what? If n is even. This is equivalent to saying that x to the power n all to the power 1 over n. Great. So we have two solutions here. If they are positive or negative 26. Here, Yashabab, the idea is the same. It will be x plus 4 all to the power uh, x plus 2 all to the power 4 equals to what? 81. Now this means that you will raise both sides to the power four, to the fourth root. Take the fourth root of both sides. Then you will get what? The absolute value of X plus two equals to, what is the fourth root of 81? Three. Now this means that X plus two is positive or negative, which means that X plus two is three or x plus two is negative three, is that right? Yes. Now, this means that x equals to three minus two or x equals to negative three minus two. It means that x is one or x is what? Negative, negative five. five, we have two solutions. I think you can do the last one with the same idea. Just copy this. Now, uh, you have your shape here, many solved exercises. And many old exams, you can practice as much as you want. Please practice, 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 and practice. It is important to practice, uh, Look at the runners or football players. Why they are playing? It is, they know how to play, but they are practicing every day. So this is you need, what you need also to do. I think it is time to say goodbye for chapter for chapter P. Of course, we will leave chapter B 
but he will not leave us. It, we will keep uh, talking about chapter B until the end of the course. So let's go now to chapter what? And say, and say goodbye to chapter zero. Do you know that we are now just starting counting? This is chapter one. So chapter B, it was chapter zero. It doesn't count. Okay, what is chapter one is about? Mainly, it is about equation. But we will start uh, like, like the three, the first three sections will be about graphs. And the remaining will be mainly about how to solve equation. Indeed, we started chapter one with MP8 because we solved, uh, learned there how to solve basic, basic equations. So we have eight sections here, mashallah, in this section, in this chapter. I think it is the longest one in this course. The first section is about the coordinate plane. What is the coordinate plane? Why we need it? Where we, uh, for what we will use it? This is what we are going to learn in this easy, short section. So it is introduction uh, section, introductory se section for chapter uh, one. After finishing this section, you will be able to graph points and regions in the XY plane, in the coordinate plane. You will be able to use the distance formula and the midpoint formula. First of all, let me give you a, a small motivation about the coordinate plane. If you know what is the coordinate plane, I think you know the coordinate plane, Shabab, it is the XY plane. But let me start from the scratch, how they thought about the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane is one of the most important discoveries in the, the history of in the history of mathematics. Before the XY plane, there were no connection between the geometry and algebra. Let me show you something. We, we have studied in P2, in P2, we have studied the numbers line. Is that right? Yeah. Every point here is what? Is a real, is a real number. And every real number can be represented as a point on on the numbers line, okay? So for example, if I, I uh, give you here three and give you here negative one, can you find the distance between them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So easy, the distance between them will be the absolute value of three minus minus one, or it is the same as negative one minus three, both of them equals to what? To four, the distance between three and negative one is four. Similarly, if you have a vertical line, if you have a vertical line, let's say this vertical line, if I give you a point here, four, and another point here, one, for example, can you find the distance between them? Yeah. So easy. It is just four minus four, the absolute value of four minus one, which is the same as the absolute value of one minus four, which is, of course, equals to what? Two, three. Two, three. Now, if I give you a point here and another point here, what is the distance between them? Now, I want to find the distance between this point and this point. Now, before discovering the, the X, the concept of the XY plane and the coordinate plane, we, we, we don't know how to find this, the length of this line here or this line segment or the distance between these two points. If we call this point A, for example, and this point B, what is the distance between these two points? Yes, you're right. And this is what they thought about uh, at the beginning. What they did, they said, we can find the, this, the, the horizontal distance, let me make this a little bit larger here to, to be corresponding to this point. Yes, it will be a good idea to have it like this. Here we are, okay? So this is the point A. So they said we can find the vertical, uh, the horizontal distance and we can find the vertical distance and the horizontal distance. So if we, if we know what is this, let's call it A. And I know what is this, let's call it B. I can find C by using what? Oh, the Pythagorean theory. So they can find it by using the Pythagorean theory. The question is uh, how to generalize this. I, I don't need to use every time that this idea. So we will see now what is the coordinate. I will come back to this to show you how to find. By the way, I need to mention something also. What they said, they said, let's, let's call this horizontal line X. And it is standard now. We have agreed, all the mathematicians and agreed that this is the X axis, this is the Y. Yeah. The horizontal axis is the X axis. The vertical axis is the Y axis. We call it X axis. And this is Y axis. Okay, now, so 
uh, let me also mention the, the, the problem I should have here. If, I, if, if I'm here, I know that this is what? Three. What is this? What are the, the numbers? This point here, if I have a point here, a point here, a point here, a point, what is this point? How to represent this point here? This is the main idea. So the trick, the trick or the discovery that Descartes did, he said what? Let's give this point two order pairs. What is corresponding to here? What is what it correspond here to? Three. And here it corresponds to what? So we will call this point, the coordinates of this point, three and four. And this point, let's let's say this is one. So this point will be what? One and one and one. So now, according to that, the points in the plane, the plane is shabab when you have cross line, cross, when you have line, you have one dimension, one, one D. When you have two lines here, you have two D, you have plane. So the points in a plane can be identified with ordered pairs of numbers from uh, this. This will form, of course, the coordinate plane or the Cartesian plane or the XY plane. We will mostly use this, uh, the last two name, the XY plane. They call it Cartesian to the last name of Descartes, the, the French mathematician Descartes, that he discovered this and published a paper about this uh, concept. This is the XY plane. Uh, each, each point here, whatever, every point here in the plane, every point here corresponds to a unique order. Unique, there is no two points with the same number, with the same coordinate. Ordered, why they call it ordered? Because the order is important. A and B, it is different from B and A. They are different. Pair, because they are two, of course, of real numbers, okay? Now, how to do that? These numbers, they are called the coordinates of the point. So let's take this point, for instance. A and B are the coordinates of this point. A is called the X coordinate, this A, and B is the Y coordinate. Or you can call this A the horizontal coordinate and B is the vertical coordinate. Now, the middle point here, the point in the middle, which the intersection point between the, the X axis and the Y axis, we call it the origin. And it is what? Zero and zero. Let me go back to this here, the original one that we discussed. This is zero, Shabab. The original point, in fact, it is zero and zero. Both are zero here. Now this one, in fact, here, it is one and what? One and zero. What is Y here? Y occurs uh, or along this line, along the X axis, Y is zero because you are not going up or down. And this point, by the way, we, we, it is a three, but indeed it is a three and, and so on. This point on the Y axis, one, it is in fact zero and one because Y here is one, but X is zero. X is zero always on this line. This is this point it is zero and four. But of course, when we are on the y-axis, we write it like that. Great, now you know that this point is one and one and this point is three and four. So you can find the horizontal distance now between them. You can find the vertical distance. You can find what is A, what is, what is B. For what will be this point, Shabab? This point is three and what? Three and one, is that right? And this will be three and four, this one. Now you can use this idea, but I, we, we will give you a formula that can calculate this. Now, calculate this, calculate this, square them, take the square root, you will get C. But the formula, this is what they did exactly to get the distance formula. But before going to the distance formula, let me mention something that is important. Because we have two lines or two axes intersect each other, this will divide the plane into four parts. We call them quadrants. So according to the order that is counterclockwise, this is quadrant number one, quadrant number two, quadrant number three, quadrant number, quadrant number four. Because here, here X is positive. Is that right? Yes. Yes. X here is what? Negative. Negative. So also here, Y is what? So here we, uh, X will be positive in the first quadrant and Y will be what? Positive. positive. Both of them are positive. In the second quadrant, Negative, X will be negative, Y is positive. In the third, both are negative. In the fourth, X will be positive, Y will be negative. What about the points that they are on the boundary, Shabab? If, if I have a point here on the Y axis, is it in the first or in the second quadrant? 
It is in fact on the axis. It is not, it is neither. It is not in the first one. It is not in the second one. Three and four, how to draw the point three and four? You will go three units. You will start from zero always. Start here, go three units to the right because it is positive. Then go up four units. You will get your point. Here it is. Now let's take another point. Uh, negative five and six. You will start from zero, go to the left. Negative five here, then go up negative six, uh, six because it is it is of course oh it is one two three four four this is five this is negative five and this is six so you will have here this point negative five and six let's take another point negative two and negative four negative two here we are we will go here negative two this is negative two and negative four there is negative four one two three four this is negative four. So you will go here and then to here. So this is your point. Four and negative three. Four and negative three. Four and negative three. Here it is. Negative three and zero. This is negative three. You will not go up or down. It is zero. Why is zero? You will stay on the x-axis. Each point, each point on the x-axis, its coordinates will be what? A and? Each point on the uh, y axis, its coordinate will be zero and come on. You can also use x, x and zero, y, uh, zero and y. It's okay. It means that any a and b could be any real number. How to describe and sketch the regions by using uh, the, the, the x, y plane? What is this? All the points x and y such that x is greater than or equal to zero. So here, whatever y is, it is about x. Go to the xy plane. Where is x greater than or equal to zero? Here? No, we are in the first quadrant. X here is and the fourth. And on the y axis, because he said here it is zero. So this is what we have. The region that is shaded here, it is clear for you? Yes. Can you see the shaded region? Here it is. Now, what about the second one? All the points in the plane x and y, such that y is one. So this is one. This is y is one here. One, 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 one. Every point here, one, y is one. Okay, so it is a horizontal line. X, all the points X and Y such that Y is greater than zero. Above, this will be above the X axis. Y is greater than zero here. Y is greater than zero. Here, Y is less than zero. Y is less than, here, Y is equal to zero on the X axis. So he said strictly, strictly uh, positive. So this means it is above the x-axis. Now, do you remember Ashabab, the Pythagorean theorem? What does it say? It says that in, in a right triangle, the sum of the square, the sum of the squares of the length of the sides A and B or legs, let's say A and B, it is equals to the square of the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side that is corresponding to the right. Uh, angle. The converse of this theorem is also true. What is the converse of this theorem? If you have any triangle such that such that a squared plus b squared equals to c squared, then this triangle is what is a right triangle. They use this idea to uh, find the, the distance between two points. Let's take a shabab. By the way, there is a mistake here. You need to we need to correct it. This is x two, not x one. So if you have any point x one and y one and another point x2 and y2, how to find the distance between them? Again, the original idea, we will not use this method, Taman. we will just show you how, from where it comes. We will denote the, the, the distance between them by using this d, d from distance, a and b, the two points. In fact, it is about the, the square of this, plus the square of this equals to the square of this. You know that if you have c squared equals to a squared plus b squared, c will be what? If you take the square root of both sides. C will be positive or negative. Is that right? Yes. But here C is a length. So it will be positive. In fact, we will not consider the negative sign. Okay? So according to that, the distance, we have the following formula. The distance between these two points will be what? The horizontal distance square plus the vertical distance square. And you know when you have absolute value and you square it, it will be the same as you, you, you don't have it. 
So if you have a shebab, two points, A and B, you need to find distance between them. It is just the first coordinate minus the first coordinate square plus the second minus the second all square. Example, what is the distance between these two points? It will be four minus two all squared plus five. By the way, it doesn't matter if you count it from here or from there, it is the same. You know that A, a, A minus B all squared, it is the same as B minus A all squared. You know that, it's the same. The distance from A to B, it is the same as the distance from A to B. So here we are, be careful just about the calculation. Always the distances are positive, so avoid such mistakes. Which point is closer to the point five and three? What do you think, how to solve such a problem? Which point is closer? Yes. Let's calculate the distance between the P and Q to the A. A. So we will calculate a. the distance a. between P and the Q? No. P a. No. A. What is the benefit of the, the calculating the distance no. between no. P and Q? We will calculate the distance from P to A Q and to then a. from Q to A. And we will see which one is bigger, which one is smaller. We want one closer, we want the smaller. So this is the distance between P and A. And this is the distance between Q and a, which one is closer, Ashaba, P or Q? P clearly, square root of 41 is less than square root of 45. Uh, Mr. Yes. You can uh, determine uh, which one is uh, closer by just looking at the number? No, it is not easy. Uh, I don't one. think so. You have, you need to find the distance. If you draw them even, if you have fractions, if you have negative and positive numbers, it's not always that easy. It might be for this one, but in general, this is the idea. So I have to do the yes, you need to find the distance between them. Uh, the midpoint formula, I will uh, late, uh, make this next class, Shabab. What I want to solve with you is this. Find, please, in your notes, try to solve this. Find a point on the y-axis that is equidistance. What is the meaning of equidistance? The they have the same distance. Equidistance means the same distance. They have the same distance from this point. So how to do, how to solve such problem? Uh, uh, let, me, let me give you a hint. If you draw, it's okay. If you didn't, no need to sketch the graph, but just this is for you to, to visualize the problem, to have an idea about it. This is the point one and one, Shabab. One and one, this is one and one. The another point is what? Five and? Five and negative five. So let's say this is negative five. This is five. Here it is. This is five and five. So we are looking for what? We are looking for a point on the y-axis. What is that? What is the coordinate of this point? Because we are on the on the x-axis, on the y-axis, so it is zero and what? Whatever. Zero and y. Zero and b. Zero and whatever. So this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. So let's say I don't know why. That's why it's positive or negative. I don't know. So let's say it is here. Let's say it is here. So this is zero and what? And y. Let me write it here. Zero and y. Now what we need to do, Shabab, what we have, he said that the distance from this point to the point one and one, it is the same as the, the distance to the point what? Five and negative, five and negative five. Okay? So this let's call this one D1 and this one D2. So what do we have? D1 equals to what? To DT, the distance now, it is not about the distance between these two points. No, the point that is on the y-axis, it is equal distance. Now, what we will do, what is the distance between this point and this point? Square root of what? One my, uh, minus zero all squared plus one minus y all squared. Is that right? Yes. Equals to the square root of one. Five. No, five. we are calculating the distance five. between this. Five minus zero all squared plus minus five minus y all squared. Now, what you can do? One minus zero all squared. One minus y squared, it is one minus two y plus y squared. Is that right? Now we can have square both sides to get rid of the radical. This is so easy. If you just square both sides, this will remove what? The radical without the absolute value, of course. So what we have also here, five minus zero is five, five squared, 25 plus 
The time is up. Uh, we will continue next time, but let me finish this. If you want to leave, your shabab leave, the time is up. What do we have here? 25 plus 10y plus y squared. You can do that in several ways, your shabab. In fact, negative 5 all squared, it is 5 plus y is all squared. Do you know that? You take a negative as a common factor, negative 1 squared is squared. Now we you will cancel lock y squared with y squared will be canceled. Now you have what two minus two y equals to what 50 plus 10 y. Do you notice that two is a common factor? Divide both sides by two. This will make it easier. Now combine the like terms, so it will be what negative six y equals to 24. Y will be negative four. So the point that we are looking for is what? It is what? Zero and y will be zero and negative four. You can check is the distance between these two points is the same or not. Thank you and see you inshallah tomorrow. Yes, please. On the previous uh, question, 